Your game doesn't have to take forever. In fact, with what I'm about to share with you, you really should be pumping out a game per year. But most developers, including myself, we typically end up in what's called development hell. Constantly making changes, adding useless features and mechanics, and focusing on things that really don't matter. See, in development hell, by the end of your game's creation, you really made two games. One that was cut, and the other that made the cut. Here's the thing, smart people simplify. Idiots, like myself, we complicate things. Personally, you can stick me into that idiot category. My first game, Pinstripe, took five years to make because I was constantly overcomplicating things. Most people call these overcomplications feature creep. My next game, Neversong, took three years because of feature creep. Now I'm on my third commercial release, which is called Twisted Tower, and by the way, you can wishlist it below, and it's taken two years. Even still, my current games go through a ton of feature creep. In fact, the game has cost over $150,000 to make, and perhaps half of that cost was just overcomplications, feature creep, things that we later scrapped. For example, we spent a week building a labyrinth hall system that constantly changed based on the player's position. Sure, this is a cool idea in theory, but the problem is we didn't dedicate enough time or resources to make this truly integral to the game. It was just feature creep, and it was all because we were just inspired by this game called My House. Another example is when I decided mini games were necessary for my game Pinstripe. Instead of just wrapping up the production of the game, I threw a wrench in the entire thing and spent months creating mini games like Spot the Difference Games and Flappy Bird. Sure, they made it to the gold master of the game, but honestly, they were completely unnecessary. Okay, so that's the problem, right? But why exactly do developers like me have this problem of feature creep? So game developers like me and my 3D artist, we love our games so much that frankly, sometimes we get a little scared. Scared that our game is too small or too simple, or that nobody's gonna understand the core game mechanics, or that mechanics just aren't fun. For example, my game Neversong started as a super simplistic, cozy platformer with beautiful music and abstract themes, but because I was scared that I wasn't gonna make enough money to live on, I spent three months building an exhausting skateboarding level that was a chore to play. I eventually scrapped the whole thing, and that was all because I was just scared of the launch. So courageous people, frankly, they know how to keep things simple. Simple people live fearlessly because they're willing to bet on a few things about themselves or about their games that they really truly believe in. Okay, so how exactly do you find that super simple focus for your game and stick to that one thing? Well, this focus is called a hook. Most game developers try and find that singular mechanical hook that makes their game unique. Kind of like Portal. The mechanical hook is shooting portals. And the whole game is about that thing. Smart game developers make this single thing the entire focus of the game. Every decision they make is determined by whether or not it complements the hook. The problem with sticking with a hook is that, in my opinion, it's just a bit too simple. The gamble here is pretty risky. If your hook is shooting portals, then you're golden, that's awesome. But if your hook is peeling oranges, and you make everything in your game about peeling oranges, your game will probably flop. So I tend to focus on what I call the Trinity hook. The Trinity hook is actually three hooks. It includes a mechanical hook, a story hook, and what I'm gonna call a sensory hook, and that's just the art or the audio. So for example, my game Twisted Tower, it has a Trinity hook. The Trinity hook is the mechanical hook of paving your own path up this changing, twisting tower. The sensory hook, that's the visual and the audio, is basically the game is Bioshock. <laughs> and finally, the story hook is, well, it's Willy Wonka, but horrifying. So for the last couple years of development, I've been unsure which part of the Trinity hook is the most effective. But I do know one thing. Every decision I make in the game's development is checked against the Trinity hook. If it doesn't complement the Trinity, I'll refuse to do it. It's just a waste of time, it's just feature creep. For example, should I add a poker minigame to Twisted Tower? Are there any hooks that correlate to this poker minigame? No, so I'm not gonna do it. What about an NPC dog? Sure, that's fun and that's cool, but does it complement the pathing system in the Twisted Tower? Not really, so I'm not gonna put it in there. But we've still got a problem. 
Can you even trust yourself to put together a super cool Trinity hook? The answer is probably not. I mean, sure, you can come up with a bunch, but parsing which elements of the Trinity hook are actually cool is more often than not just a roll of the dice based purely on your gut. As a game developer, most of the time you just can't trust your gut. I know that I can't. That's because you're either your worst critic or your biggest fan. You're never going to be as balanced in your opinion about your game as your own players. You're probably going to hate your game and constantly change everything, or you're gonna be stubborn about every little useless mechanic you spent months needlessly creating. But even film directors eventually cut out a bunch of fat from their films. The cutting of fat is the shedding of the ego. After all, the extra stuff you crammed into your game is probably a result of your pride. And by the way, don't forget, pride can be a negative trait, like hating or loathing yourself or your game. I mean, come on, do you really think that you're worth that much negative energy? Or pride can be a positive trait, like thinking your game is gonna change the world. And every single decision to cut or remove something is like removing an amendment to the Constitution. Take it easy, again. <laughs> You're not that special. So if you can't trust your gut about which hooks are actually valuable, an audience is your solution. If you have an audience on social media, listen to them. They'll tell you what's cool. And it's likely you'll eventually find out that they were right. And if you have team members, listen to them too. My team's 3D artist, Felipe, offers brilliant feedback to my ideas that sometimes I don't understand. But eventually, after I stubbornly pursue my idea first, I actually come back to accept his. Now, once you have a firm idea of your Trinity hook based on the opinion of your audience or your team, focusing on that Trinity hook and focusing on what matters for your game is so much easier. And ultimately, you're gonna spend way less time in development hell. All right, guys, thanks for watching.